Hello, my name is Simon MacDonald and I work for the Jersey Festival of Words and it's my great pleasure to be able to talk today to the author Jenny Lacote, who's written a marvellous book um, entitled Hedy's War, uh, which she's now going to talk to us virtually from her home in Brighton. Is that right, Jenny? Um, uh, Hove, uh, actually. In Hove, I'm, I'm yeah. so sorry. There is a, there is a very <laughs> particular differentiation, isn't there? So I'm here in Jersey and this book is about Jersey, a particular period in Jersey, and Jenny is in Hove, and it's uh, very nice to see you. Welcome. Thank you, Simon. Very nice to see you too, and very happy to be here, and um, let's hope we get to the uh, Jersey Festival of Words later this year. Fingers crossed. Absolutely. This, this will have to do for the time being, but it's, 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 a, it's a good start. Let's keep our fingers crossed and be optimistic. So, Jenny, if I could begin. Um, Hedy's War, uh, the inspiration behind this, um, where, where, did, where did the idea come from? What, what prompted you to, to start and start work on this, this particular story? Well, the story had been sort of kicking around a few occupation history books for a while, but it wasn't very well known until 2016. And then Dr. Jilly Carr, who a lot of people in the islands will know as a, um, a Channel Island historian, had been working um, to get a Yad Vashem award for Dorothea, who's one of the people involved in the story. And uh, when this happened in 2016, suddenly the story became quite a big news item. And Jilly sent me two BBC links um, which basically told this amazing story of this, uh, this Jewish woman who'd escaped to the islands in 1938, escaped to Jersey, and uh, became trapped there. And uh, that's, the, the story was so extraordinary and so unusual, and not an occupation story that I think, until that point, many people knew, that... I just immediately thought, well, this is a fantastic story to write. And of course, because of my family background, um, I've always had, or certainly in, the, in recent years, I've had a big interest in the occupation. And um, the chance of writing a book means you get to, as opposed to Another Mother's Son, which, I, which came out in 2017, is you get a chance to cover all that background in the islands um, of what was going on as part of the occupation. So it seemed like a great opportunity. And yeah, of course, absolutely. 75th anniversary seemed like the right time to do it as well. Yeah, of course. I, I, I mean, if you could just explain a little bit about your, your, your link with Jersey and also your family and, and, you know, obviously the screenplay, the film, Another Mother's Son was written very, very personally, wasn't it? About something that, that occurred within your family. So the people who don't know, could you just give us a, a bit of a gloss on, on, on that particular story as well and your, your relationship with Jersey? Well, I grew up in Jersey. My parents are Jersey people um, and my family goes back in the island quite a long way. And during the occupation, both sides of the family actually were involved in what you might refer to as resistance activity. And on my mum's side of the family, they were sheltering um, two Russian slave workers. And my great aunt um, took in this Russian slave worker who she treated almost as her own son. Her own, um, uh, one of her sons had died in the war a couple of years earlier. And so that became, a, that was sort of wallpaper in my family. I'd always known about it and was always very interested in it. It ended very tragically when um, they, they were betrayed, um, we think by neighbors. And um, she was sent to Ravensbrook and died at Ravensbrook. And her brother, my great uncle Harold, was one of the, pretty much the only British survivor of Belson. So this has been a big part of my family history. And um, a number of years ago, I decided I wanted to write about it. And because I just didn't think that anyone else was going to cover the story. So I wrote Another Mother's Son, which came out in 2017, which is the story of my great aunt and the family looking after the Russian they called Bill. Okay. 
so this is now the second the second phase of a, of, a, of, a, of a very kind of deep interest a very deep attachment with involvement with Jersey uh, the occupation I mean the only British soil to be uh, you know the Channel Islands the only British soil to be occupied by Nazi forces during during the Second World War so obviously huge resonance 75th anniversary of liberation um, a well-known story perhaps in Jersey do you think people in the UK are aware of the position that the Channel Islands sat in at that particular time and, and the history. Do you think that that's a very well-known thing or, or less so? Well, part of the reason that I wanted to write both of these is that I know from talking to friends, and, and this was made very clear to me when Another Mother's Son came out, practically no one outside the islands really knows the full background of the occupation. And if they do know about it, it tends to be a very broad, um, it's one of two narratives. There's, there's a narrative that says, oh, it wasn't really that bad. That narrative persisted for several decades after the war, I think. It wasn't really that bad. The islanders didn't really suffer that much and, uh, and everyone rubbed along fine. And then there was a second narrative which appeared um, sometime later, which was, um, it was pretty terrible for the islanders, but they all collaborated and everyone was involved in you know, collaborating with the Germans. Neither of those narratives, I believe, is true. And I also wanted to get something of the complexity of that story over. Um, there were, it's interesting what we're going through at the moment with this pandemic, you're seeing a very similar kind of social aspect emerge, which is that people who are basically decent rise to the occasion and go out of their way to help people and to support neighbors and to take chances. And people who are basically wicked horrible people um will do the opposite and i'm afraid that's exactly what happened in jersey during the occupation as it did in every other occupied territory there were people who were incredibly brave um and i'm glad to say my family i, I can put in into that category although they weren't always very careful about how they went about it yeah. and um and there were other people, like the people who betrayed them, who just used the situation to their advantage. So it's a complex picture. And, and because it's not very well known outside of, um, outside of the islands, really, um, I wanted to get some of that complexity out to the public, really, to, uh, to a wider public. OK, yeah. I, I, I can see how uh, I can see how I, I, re I read it and um, just obviously picked it up uh, very 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 recently very lucky to to be able to get to see it so so early and you know, really could not put it down sitting here in Jersey and uh, reading about those place names and you know knowing that that place exists and I've walked down that beach and I've been to those been to those parade of shops and I've walked through the through the market and so on and so forth kind of makes it feel very real uh, for somebody sat here. So when I read it and I tried to try to project that kind of idea of okay if I'm not from Jersey I don't get that. Uh, does this still does this still give me that give me that sense of friction, that sense of we're in a particular time and place now where we've got that difficulty. But these characters seem so doing extraordinary things uh, in, in quite extraordinary times, but just ordinary people trying to make the best of a situation and then their hand being forced. So I found that very much to be a, a, a great strength in the book. And I'd like to talk to you if, it, if it's okay to talk a bit about the characters now in, in the, the story of Hedy's War. Um, tell, us, tell us about where you began with that. I mean, Hedy is obviously the, 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 the titular name of, of, of your, your heroine. So who is she and how did you start to uh, develop this? Because it has to be said, doesn't it? It's a true story. This person existed, but what you have written is a, is a, is a fictionalized uh, um, uh, view of, of her and her time in that, particular, in that particular moment. So where did you begin with Hedy? Okay, yes, it's true that the, this isn't a history book. It's, um, it's based on a true story and there are aspects of the story that we know to be true. The foundations of the story um, the skeleton, if you like, is true and documented. However, there's whole massive sections of the, of the story that we don't know. We don't know how any of the characters in the story met or knew each other. We don't know how those relationships developed. Um, so what I did was I looked at the facts that we knew. And I started with Hedy as someone who had escaped the Angelus 
escaped across Europe, um, initially with her sister, but then alone, turns up in Jersey, um, knows no one here, finds herself work, and she's really young. She's 20, 21 when she arrives here. And that means to me that she must have been an incredibly strong character. Um, once the occupation began, we know that she tried to lie to the authorities to pretend that she wasn't Jewish to save herself, which was a smart but dangerous thing to do, wasn't successful. Um, we know that she took work with the German authorities, which must have been really conflicting for her. And then we know that she formed a relationship with a German officer. And also that she was stealing from the people that she worked for to help her local community. Now you put all these things together, that is someone who is really tough, but also I imagine has a great deal of internal conflict going on. I think someone who's been through that is probably a very strong-minded person, but possibly quite bloody-minded at times as well. And I also didn't want to create, although she is a heroine in the book, she's the, she's the main character and clearly a, somebody that you would definitely admire as a human being. But as a writer, you can't write an angelic heroine because they're one dimensional and they're not interesting. So I wanted to create someone who I thought might be a little bit chippy and who would have very strong opinions. Um, so that's the character that I've created. And I wanted to make sure that she had somewhere to go in the book, that she had stuff to learn about other people and about herself, because I can't imagine that anyone going through that kind of intense situation would not learn stuff about other people and about themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, her, her relationship, I mean, it's interesting what you say about Hedy being chippy. I love that. I love that, um, that, that phrase, but there's, there's, there are flaws and insecurities and certainly conflicts that she, she has to, she has to overcome. And at times in her relationships with you know other characters in the book and, and perhaps none more so than with you know Dorothea uh their relationship is 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 tricky isn't it it's it's a it's a very it's a very delicate uh, mm. uh, it, from the outset without trying to give too much away how did Dorothea emerge for you um from 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 the shadows well I grew up in Jersey in the 60s and 70s obviously several decades after that but Obviously, I had relations um, who had been in Jersey all their lives. So I knew something about island people. And I knew that the chances are that Dorothea, by the nature of who she was, would be quite an insular, unworldly person. On the other hand, we know that she married Anton, who was another Austrian, um, who again had escaped before the war. Um, but he was conscripted to the army. So she effectively became what was known in the islands as a jerry bag because she was married to somebody who was forced onto the German side. So she had quite a complicated life. And I realized that to create an interesting relationship between the two about which nothing is really known except that Dorothea took her in and effectively saved her life. Mm -hmm. To make that an interesting story, I didn't want to start them off as being friends because if you've got two people who are kind of quite similar and get along really well, that's not going to be a very interesting story. And I thought, given that we don't really know who these people were, let's make it more interesting. Let's give them something that they can learn about each other. I, I hope at the end, we, what comes out is that Dorothea, who at the beginning, perhaps like Hedy, we may make judgments about, actually turns out to be one of the most moral and strong people in the book. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. I think I think their relationship is, is beautifully detailed and the journey that they go on together where you think they're not going to be perhaps in any way, you know, just running along parallel lines and the way they then bump into each other and start to bump and get closer, I think is, uh, is, 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 a, is, a, is very beautifully done. Uh, I enjoyed their relationship growing. Um, the relationship that, that, that Hedy has with uh, this German officer, uh, Again, this is this is tricky. You you've got a number of characters here living in an island, a small community, at a very particularly uh, 
uh, dangerous uh, time for everybody mm. and you have an Austrian and you have Hedy who's come from Europe and you have German officers and you're 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 talking about them in ways which make them very human how important to you was that that idea of look there are no uh, there are no kind of like black and white uh, uh, areas here this is all very grey and you've got to kind of accept that in periods of great stress great conflict this is this is very important do, do you have any qualms about the, the, the fact that you know you, you've 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 developed this relationship you detail this relationship between a German officer and 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 Hedy in a romantic way uh, were, there, were there kind of any doubts that you felt as you went along well we know that Hedy and Kurt had a relationship and we know that it was a, it was a big important romantic relationship um, because you know we, we know we know that is that that is documented mm. so the interesting thing which is not known is how they got together so you have a Jewish girl who was um, scared enough of the Nazis to run to the other side of the continent and yet gets into a relationship with someone who represents that and again I for the characters I went to the actions I went to what they did and Kurt not only became involved with a woman who was Jewish although we didn't know whether or not he knew that she was Jewish at the beginning so mm. I made my own choices about that um, what we do know is that once she went into hiding with Dorothea he was someone who visited who brought food and kept her alive if he had been caught doing that he would have certainly have lost his career and he may very well have lost his life so you have these three people bound together in this mutually dependent secrecy on which all their lives depend and to get to that point I couldn't I could not believe that Kurt could be anything other than someone who was flexible in his beliefs okay he would have grown up in Germany with all the influences of Nazi Germany at that time but I I couldn't accept that someone could go from being a committed Nazi to being someone who supported a Jewish woman in that kind of way so my choice in this book um, is that Kurt again has a journey of his own he starts off not being you know going along with much of, of the German philosophy of that time but discovers throughout the story that that um, there's a great deal more to the world than he realized absolutely yeah um, it, it's it's um it, it struck me uh, that the, the modern resonance as well that you know you've, you've already alluded to the times that we're living in with perhaps trying to kind of not talk about the the elephant in the room or at least the elephant out in the deserted streets <laughs> of, of the UK and, and everywhere around the world at the moment um, but that sense of um, that sense of isolation um, that sense of avoidance um, kind of did give for me and I'm not trying to equate what, what happened then with my own personal very privileged you know position that I find myself in now I might be going out of my mind a little bit by having to stay in all the time but it's nothing compared to that but that that, that very prescient feeling of avoiding people on the street and uh, evading people on the street really does give this book when I was reading it just very recently the sense of Oh my goodness you know this is just this is the way the world works the, the historical element is just uh, do you feel that this is going to give uh, uh, the book uh, um, more of a lift or do you feel like oh this is just typical that, that this should be happening now and you must be very torn you and your, your 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 publishers you know polygon books you must all be us at the festival of words are feeling very much like how could this happen you know now for, 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 for quite selfish reasons but you know you're in a you're in a position where you've written something which is very much of the moment it's very much now it talks about things that people are experiencing now not the same period of time but how do you feel about that I mean you've been planning the book for ages so you, you know it's, it's not something that necessarily you know yes. you were expecting. the book was finished about a year ago so the idea that any of the events in the book would be coming into my own life is kind of extraordinary um when i was um when i was thinking about it the other just a, a few months ago before the lockdown started and thinking how did those characters how, how did those people 
um, those real people survive that? How did, how did they cope with that level of anxiety and, and being trapped inside? And then, of course, within a matter of months, you find that you have a little taste of what that is like. As you say, not to compare the two, because we're not, you know, I'm not going to have soldiers bursting into my house and turning over my furniture. Um, and it's, there, is, there is food available for those who can pay for it, although, of course, there are many people who are struggling for food at the moment. So, yeah, it's, it's, it has become a strangely prescient story. And um, the, the period of the book in, where Hedy is, is incarcerated with Dorothea may actually resonate with a number of people at the moment, I think. Mm, abs ab absolutely. Um, I mean, on that, on that sort of note, the fact that, you know, Another Mother's Son was 2017 and this, this book now coming out in 2020. So you've gone from a screenplay uh, to a novel. I mean, obviously you have a background in script writing, but uh, early, earlier incarnations of stand up as, as well. So you, you've written and performed in, in all sorts of manners and guises. Could you perhaps just in a more general way talk a little bit about the, the, the writing process and how that how that differs? I'm, I'm sure there is a difference, but I don't know if, if, if you've experienced that from writing screenplays, writing scripts to writing a novel. This is your novel, I'm sure the first of many. But how, how different is the is the routine or, or, the, or the style um, in, in terms of in terms of your own writing? Well, the reason that I decided to do this story as a novel is because I had done um, my own family story as a screenplay and I thought to do another occupation story in the same genre was probably going to be too samey. And I also thought that in a novel I could cover a lot of the background of the island occupation that there simply isn't space for in the more restricted format of a screen. Um, it's a very different genre though, it's so different and I had to get quite a lot of help from novelists that I knew. Um, I've, I've been a, a teacher of script writing um, previously and I've had quite a lot of novelists come to me to learn how to be a screenwriter. I had to then go back to them and ask for help to travel in the other direction. Yeah, so you put yourself really out of your comfort zone to, 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 to do this and you didn't feel particularly confident to begin with but <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't confident about this in any way right. um, I was um, I, I was convinced that I would probably fail at about chapter four and that the whole lot would go in the bin and I did nearly get to that point a number of times um, it's a very lonely thing to do as well because you're working on this huge unwieldy story and you're, you're trying to keep all these things in your head. And it, my husband is a writer, so you, you can share certain aspects of it. But there's so much that you, that you can't really explain without sitting down and talking about it for two hours that you end up saying, oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll sort it out myself. And you end up locked in your own head, in your own office for months and months at a time on a project that you don't even know is ever going to see the light of day. So it's, yeah, it, it's a, it's a strange and lonely process and it's, and it's much lonelier than, than a screenplay, but on the other hand, you get a lot more creative control over it. So swings and roundabouts. For sure. Here's a, here's a horrible question for you. Which do you prefer? I think they both have advantages and disadvantages. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't done it. I haven't. I've only written one novel, and I've done a lot of screen work. So um, I can't see myself going back to television after this. But whether or not I think about another screenplay or another novel, I mm. think will probably depend on the subject matter as much as anything else, and, and where you think it fits best. But sure. um, yes, it's it, it's it's been. It's been a difficult process, but it's also been quite enjoyable as well. Well, you, you must feel very proud of, of it too. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very important piece of work. I mean, not just for the fact that, you know, it, it, it focuses on a place that I've come to know and love uh, 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 and have my own kind of relationship with, but it's a very important piece of work for that whole idea of spreading that information. And a novel does, does do that in a slightly different way. You're, you're quite right. Um, do you think that that whole idea of um, while you may not have thought a screenplay was what you were going to do, have you already done this and you know, that's part of my family history and I'm writing a book, can you not see though 
the possibility of this this novel being picked up to become uh, a film or a TV series because it, it, it has a very kind of visual like like all like all great works of literature it, it, everything has a very visual edge doesn't it it, it, do you entertain that idea of, of somebody taking it on and adapting it or would you feel that you know you'd like to keep that control if the possibility of something changing uh, it becoming a film or a tv series well i'll tell you what simon i've been in this game too long to jump forward on those kind of things we just yeah. see what happens yeah. i think the start of the book is quite filmic a number of people have said that to me and that's and that's because you know having had 30 years experience writing for screen you tend to think visually and um in fact one of the uh, the people who gave me advice on the book said try to think of it in terms of directing your own film um and and to describe what you want people to see um and that was a very useful point for me when i was writing it so yes i think i think it's quite a a, a filmic book um whether or not anything further comes of it we'll we'll see in the future yeah. I mean, it was written and, and we were hoping to have you here for Liberation 75, you know, a massive, massive date in the calendar, um, 75 years since the end of the, the, the occupation of, of Jersey, the Channel Islands. Um, it's going to be a very different celebration uh, mm. this year uh, to, to, uh, to how it has been in previous years. And I, I wonder if it's perhaps going to be more poignant uh, in, in some ways because of the fact that there are going to be restrictions uh, about this. Do you have any plans? I mean, obviously, we're working on a sort of day by day basis at the moment. Do you, do you have any plans about how you you might mark the moment in terms of uh, 75 years, you and your family at a distance, obviously, you being in the UK and, and, and you know, family still here? How, how well, will it be for you? I still have family in the island, so I'm sure I'll be contacting them over that period. Um, the original plan was that uh, we were going to be over in the islands for a period um, not just for Liberation Day, but for the launch of the book mm -hmm. and for the uh, 13th Parish Film Festival. There's so many things going on culturally in the island in May. And it's such a shame that, um, that those events won't, won't be happening now. Um, it's particularly sad, I think, that the 75th won't be celebrated in the way that it was because it may be the last opportunity for a few people who remember the occupation, who lived through it, um, like my dad, for example, who was a child during the occupation, to actually experience an event like that firsthand and a commemoration like that. Mm. Because the next time we get to a big event like that, a lot of those people may not be here. So it's it's a real shame. But as you say, in, in some ways, perhaps it, the enormity of this, perhaps the, you know, the biggest global event since the Second World War, um, mm. has brought the reality of, of that even more into people's minds and perhaps it does make it a bit more poignant. I guess I'll be probably sitting here watching stuff on television and there's nearly always documentaries um, that come up for those anniversaries as well. Um, I know that for the 50th anniversary um, there were documentaries which featured various members of my family and I can right. remember sitting at my flat in London watching these pictures of my family coming up on the screen thinking that's my great aunt, that's my great uncle. And that was actually around the time that I thought, you know what, this is a huge story and I need to think about writing this. So 25 years on, it's gonna be interesting mm. to, to watch those documentaries again, which I'm, I'm sure they'll, they will be on different channels and, um, and to be able to think, hopefully I've, I've made a little bit of a contribution to that story being better understood outside of the islands now. Sure. So, Hedy's War by Jenny Lacote, published by Polygon Books today. Jenny, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure to read your book and to talk to you today in these very strange times. But uh, thank you so much. And we wish you, uh, from the Jersey Festival words, the very best of luck and success with, with, with Hedy's War. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Simon. It's been a real pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Thank you.